All right, so I know I said I would do it every Sunday, but I just couldn't help but finish uh, last time's tutorial. So last time, what did we talk about? We talked about starting a project, and I showed you guys the cut tool, and I showed you guys how to go back to mouse, um, how to drag stuff into your timeline. So from there, I was going to show you guys one of the more important parts that you're probably going to be using a lot is the effect controls. So let's say I want to bring an image into my timeline or I put it on top of this this screen here right and this will be the foundation uh, for putting in videos on top of videos if you want to have two videos going at the same time like we do where we have gameplay and us sitting on the couch same thing applies so let's find our uh, image here but I think it's this one yeah so a little Hitler brat over here we're just going to drag that right from here, right? This is your media browser in this bottom left. Again, make sure you're on the media browser tab. Grab that image and drag it on, right? Again, you can do that up from here if you double click it, and then it'll show up in your source monitor, and you can drag it up down from here. So this is your, this is our little brat Hitler thing, right? So this playhead, we're going to move all the way back just to see where it is. So it's a little too big there, so let's change the size now. The what the easiest way to change the size is to just go right up here in your uh, view monitor or whatever, and just double click it. And usually, if it's small enough, you'll get the grabby buttons, but this image is too big, so we're gonna have to go to the effect controls. So let's just zoom in here. Remember, this is your scroll. These are your zooms here at the end. These little squares. So let's zoom in. Um, so make sure you have the right clip selected and then go up to effect controls up here in your top left box. Now this is the screen you're looking for, right? So select your clip, go up here, go to effect controls, right? Effect controls up here in this tab, right? So again, it's not going to show up. So double click again, effect controls. So this is the screen you want where it says motion, opacity, time remapping, this timeline here. This, so this is the timeline for this specific clip. Um, and this is what you want. This is the kind of screen you want. So let's go to motion. Hit the little button here, the little arrow that spindles down, position, scale, rotation, anchor point, anti-flicker, all this stuff. So since it's too big right now, let's grab the scale. So I'm going to click and hold. See, it says 100 scale here. So this is the size is 100 scale when it's at 100 scale. So click, hold, right? I'm holding. I'm going to drag left to make it smaller. See that, how it's going smaller on the right there? If I can move it, if I click hold, go right, it's going to get bigger, right? So if I want it to go smaller, I'm going to click hold. Oh, it's a little laggy there. And just make it that size, right? You can also do it manually by just clicking, and then you can change the value to something more specific. So let's say 71 is a little too small, so I'll go to whatever, 75, right? One a little bigger. Something like that, right? So let's just make it a little smaller here. So that's for scale. For motion, or sorry, for position, you got these two values, right? So this is your X and this is your Y. So same thing, if you click hold and drag left, it'll move left, right? Drag right. So let's say I want it right there. And then I'm going to put it down just so we can't see the bottom there. Right? Again, that's clicking and holding. Now, the easier way, like I said, is if you want to go right in here and double click. Right? So you see you get these little buttons you can pull here, little drag buttons. Actually, you should do it manually, and then you can move it wherever you want. So that's the easier way, but sometimes the image is too big, right? So see, I can't grab the things anymore. There's no, it's too big right now. So this is where you have to use these values, right? You go into the effect controls again, motion, drop this down, position and scale. Okay, so let's see how much time we have. We're at four minutes. Okay, so let's go into how to make things move, right? So again, this is the same thing over here in your motion. You want to go into this box and you're going to click these buttons here. These are the big ones that are going to make things move, right? So let's say I want this guy, our little brat animation to move from out of the screen, so it's not seen, into the screen, hang out here for a second, and then leave, right? So we're going to start over here, 
and we're going to make a keyframe. We're going to start the keyframe thing. So that's what these are. These are that's what these are going to do. Is they're going to give you keyframes and explain. They'll make sense in a second when I explain how to do this. So hit this clock button, position. Now this dot here is a keyframe, right here. Let's move it out here so you can see it. So this is a keyframe. This is your first keyframe. So at this point in time, it's going to have these values. So the X position will be 864, and the Y position will be 578 at this point in time, right? So we only have one keyframe right now. So the whole time through this timeline, the whole time where this clip is on, it'll just be on those values. So if you want it to move, let's get onto this, this keyframe here. And let's just move it out of the screen. Let's just start, start it way back there. So see, it kind of made its own keyframe there. Um, that's fine. You know what? Let's see if I can select it. There we go. So at this point in time, and this keyframe, it's going to be out of the screen, right? So let's say I want it to slide into the screen. So you're going to move the playhead over a bit, and then you're going to change these values. So I'm going to slide it in from the, the right left right so you're gonna grab click hold see I'm changing the values here to move it over and I'm just gonna have them hang out right there so between point this keyframe and this keyframe he's gonna be moving right so if I play it he moves in from the right because from this point in time he's off the screen and this point in time he's where I want him to be Let's say that's a little too fast, so what would you do? You would move this keyframe, or you'd make the space between these keyframes bigger, right? So then it'll be slower. So let's make it say I think that's too fast. So that means between this two, these two points, it's going to move a little slower now, because that the space is bigger, right? So, play it again. It's a little slower, right? Um, I hope my thing's not lagging, just because I know Adobe Premiere and Game Capture take a toll on my computer when they're playing at the same time. I said that in the first one, but bear with me if it is. So again, if you want to make the, these things go slower, you make the space between them bigger. If you want to make it faster, we'll put them closer together, right? So a little faster. Let's say I'm done with that. I want it to hang out there for a little while, and then maybe around here I want it to slide out, right? So what am I going to do? I'm going to make another keyframe here where the values don't change. And the reason is because between this point and this point, he's going to stay there. So the values of these will not change. I hope that makes sense, right? So again, start from here. He's going to slide in. So he slid in there, right? This is the point. These two points is when the values are changing from on the X position. And then from here, it's going to just stay there. So these values are just going to stay the same. He's going to hang out here, and everything's going to stay the same, right? So if we play it, he's just going to hang out there. Right? So he's just going to hang out there. Um, so when we want him to leave, we do the same thing on the other side and make another keyframe and just move him all the way over out of the screen. So he just exits that way, right? So what's that going to look like? So if we play it... Right, so he was moving here, hanging out, hanging out for a bit, and then here he just slides back out, right? He slides out the other way. So that's how you make things move. Um, we're already at eight and a half, or almost nine minutes again, so... This, these keyframes are going to come up again and again when you use different effects and stuff like that. Because if you want things to move and have effects over time, something to fade out, fade in, and all that stuff. So keyframes are a really big, uh, important part of uh, Premiere. Um, so this is one simple way to get used to it. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys next time.